Hey guys and welcome back to another video. I'm Pia and today we're going to be talking about the milk and dairy industry. Milk is the biggest scam that's ever existed on this earth. We have been taught that milk is healthy for you, it gives you protein and it gives you calcium. So by drinking milk you're gonna be healthy, you're gonna get a bunch of protein which we all need lots of or not and you're gonna get your calcium need covered. Every day we see commercials on TV, we see the most crazy commercials on TV and they always include happy cows. A new Mercy for Animals undercover investigation takes you behind the closed doors of New York's largest dairy factory farm, exposing cows too sick or injured to stand, calves having their horns burned off and tails cut off without painkillers, cows suffering from untreated infections and open wounds, newborn calves being dragged away from their mothers, and cows subjected to overcrowded and filthy living conditions. And happy milk cows do not exist anywhere. We're out of milk. Are you kidding me? The commercials are made really, really well to get more of us on to the milk. So one of the things that the milk and dairy industry do is to insert the bovine growth hormone into the cows to produce more milk in a shorter period of time. So more milk makes more money and more money is what the dairy industry is all about. One of the first stories that Jane came up with was the uh, revelation that most of the milk in the state of Florida and throughout much of the country uh, was adulterated with the effects of bovine growth hormone, the artificial hormone that farmers were injecting into their cows so that they would produce more milk. It's a great time to be a high producing cow. Pozilac One Step, bovine somatotropin by Monsanto on crack cocaine. That's how author Robert Cohen describes something shot into millions of cows on American farms. In a book called Milk, the Deadly Poison, Robert Cohen attacks what's long been considered the perfect food, claiming it can be a dangerous brew of chemical, biological, and bacterial agents that may also contain a growth hormone he believes can trigger the growth of cancer. Don't forget about the natural occurring hormones that the milk contains and which causes a bunch of different issues in your body because the milk is not supposed to be in the human body it's supposed to be in calf's belly and you also got pus milk contains a lot of pus how disgusting is that and did you even know the milk ads with celebrities and sports figures wearing something that's supposed to look like a milk mustache right well here's something they don't tell you pasteurized milk often contains alarming levels of pus Gross. also known as somatic cells which are the same kind of cells produced in a giant zit on your forehead. Hey, Halle Berry, did you know that's pus on your lip? Nice. According to the National Milk Producers Federation, the maximum level of pus, which they call somatic cells, allowed in milk currently stands at 750,000 cells per milliliter of milk. So an eight ounce glass of milk can contain up to 180 million pus cells. The dairy industry knows that high levels of so-called somatic cells indicate poor milk quality and efforts have been made to lower the allowable pus content to just 450,000 cells per milliliter but those were rejected by the industry in 2011 which favors the higher allowable pus cell count of 750,000 pus cells per milliliter now these pus cells somatic cells are made with white blood cells produced by the cow in response to an infection of the mammary glands. It is essentially the same liquid you spray on the mirror when you pop a giant nasty zit. Zit with some soy milk because I don't eat um, dairy. Don't you? Why not? Because it's disgusting. Mm. Sucking on a cow's booby is uh, not. I'm not into it anymore. What, not even. Not even a bit of cheese. No, no more cheese. No more pus for me. What? Does milk increase mucus production? 
Is that fact or fiction? It appears to be fact. The milk protein casein breaks down in the stomach to produce a substance called casomorphin, which, as its name implies, has opioid effects, which makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint, as species survival may depend on a close maternal bond between infant and mother. The guess is that opioid receptors on the mucous glands in the respiratory tract may respond to the casomorphin from milk, which could potentially stimulate the production and secretion of mucus from these respiratory glands. This may explain why a subgroup of the population who have increased respiratory tract mucus production find that many of their symptoms, including asthma, improve on a dairy elimination diet. There's so many things in the milk that cause inflammation in the body and can cause cancer. It's not end to how many harms milk can do to the human body. It's just freaking ridiculous, and it's crazy to think about that it's such a popular food. Because the dairy industry have marketed it so well. We see happy cows on TV, we see kids drinking it in the morning with their parents in their loving home. It's just a big, big scam that needs to be revealed to the world, and I'm here to share the truth with you guys. Might want to put down those chicken wings and dump that glass of milk. They could be as bad for you as a cigarette. That's according to a new study published in the journal Cell Metabolism Tuesday. Middle-aged people who regularly consume a diet high in animal proteins from meat and dairy products are apparently more likely to die of cancer than those who don't. One of the study's authors said in a press release, there's a misconception that because we all eat, understanding nutrition is simple. But the question is not whether a certain diet allows you to do well for three days, but can it help you survive to be 100? To get their results, researchers studied more than 6,000 adults over the age of 50 over the course of 20 years. They found on average about 16% of their total daily calories came from protein, and two-thirds of that was animal protein. CBS says researchers then tested the IGFI levels of about 2,200 people in the sample group. Those who consumed the highest levels of animal proteins in their diets were four times more likely to die of cancer than low-protein eaters. According to the study, that rate is similar to the cancer risk between smokers and non-smokers. In a study of 140,000 men this year, 35 grams of dairy protein increase the risk of developing high-grade prostate cancer by 76%. So that's like 2% increased risk for every gram of milk protein. So like a, a cup of cottage cheese a day could increase one's risk by about 50%. The dairy industry now has a new campaign. It's called Three a Day. Three a Day for Stronger Bones. Three dairy products a day for stronger bones. Do you know where they get that slogan from? You've heard of the five a day program, which is a really good legitimate program. It's now gone up to nine a day because they know five a day of fruits and vegetables really isn't enough, but that's what they started. Now they're up to telling you to eat nine a day. Pretty soon they'll be telling you something really radical like just eat fruits and vegetables <laughs> because that's what the truth is. The, okay, so the average calcium intake in underdeveloped countries is 300 to 500 milligrams a day. Try and remember some of these figures. Calcium intake for the average American is 500 to 600 milligrams a day. World Health Organization. World Health Organization that's responsible for the nutritional needs of most people on this earth recommend 4 to 500 milligrams a day. But uh, industry-influenced organizations in this country recommend things, amounts such as 1,000 to 1,300 milligrams a day from the U.S. Food and Nutrition Board and the National Institutes of Health, 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams a day. Ask yourself, you see these figures, you ask yourself, well, how in the world could we have recommendations all the way from 150 to 1,500 milligrams a day? How could such numbers exist? The only way such numbers could exist is if calcium intake has little or nothing to do with the health of the bones. And that's what the truth is, and I'll show you how that works in just a second. The uh, dairy industry has influenced, no, excuse me, let me say it correctly. The dairy industry has paid for almost all of the research studying the effects of calcium on bone health. Okay? You'll find it, if you look, whenever I read a study, I'll tell you the, the first thing that I do is I look for who funded it. And if you read the studies that are discussed 
over the next few minutes and the ones that are in this particular paper, which is in the September 2000 issue of the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and you take and pull the studies out of the library and look at the funding, you'll find almost every one of these studies were paid for by the dairy industry. Interesting. The investigators that published this paper in September of 2000, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, they found 57 studies that talk about the benefits of dairy products on bone health. 57, that's all, just 57. And when they looked at the uh, quality of study design, they decided that only 21 were worth really considering. Uh, protein content of the milk supplement may have a negative effect on calcium balance, possibly through an increase in kidney losses of calcium or through a direct effect on bone resorption. Focus on those words. Protein having a detrimental effect on the calcium. Don't forget those words because the dairy industry's forgot them. This may have been due to an average 30% increase in protein intake during the milk supplementation. It says right there in their paper. What causes osteoporosis? The bones are designed to last a lifetime. Your bones aren't designed to dissolve when you're 40, 50, or 60 years old. They're designed to last you for 85 years. Strong, to carry you around, to do all the activities that a normal woman or man is supposed to do. So this has to be a disease. There has to be something wrong. We have to be living by the wrong set of rules. And the wrong set of rules is the fact that we are eating a diet not intended for human beings. So the biggest reason why you should not support the milk and dairy industry is all the horrors behind the milk. When you drink a glass of milk, there's a calf who don't. As a mother, I experience the joy of raising my son every day. But not all moms are so lucky. Like human mothers, cows carry their young for nine months and have strong maternal instincts. And their calves would naturally consume their milk for almost a year. But mother cows on dairy farms have their young traumatically torn away from them shortly after birth so that the milk meant for their calves can be sold to people instead. <laughs> Male calves are considered little more than a byproduct, and most are either slaughtered for meat or shipped off to the horrific veal industry, where many spend their short lives in tiny crates, unable to even turn around. Female calves are destined for the same sad fate as their mothers. Cows also suffer horrific abuses on dairy farms. Many cows have holes punched through their ears and have their horns or sensitive horn tissue cut or burned off without any painkillers. Some farmers even remove parts of cows' tails with rubber bands or sharp knives. When their milk production declines, cows are sent to slaughter to be ground up into hamburger. A cow's natural lifespan is about 25 years, but cows used by the dairy industry are killed after only four or five years. The best way to help cows abused by the dairy industry and keep your family healthy is to stock your fridge with delicious vegan foods. Dairy-free milk, cheese, ice cream, and yogurt are readily available at your local grocery or health food store and offer all the nutrition that you and your children need with none of the cholesterol or cruelty found in dairy products. I hope you learned something new about the milk and dairy industry and I hope you will pass this video on to your friends and family and share it on Facebook, share it everywhere so people can get to know the truth behind 
the milk and dairy industry. So thank you guys for tuning into my channel again today and for watching this video. And I love you and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!